Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise him, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is a good God, yes he is. God is a good God, yes he is. Our God is a good God, yes he is. Our God is a good God, yes he is. Hallelujah. Good morning, Holy Spirit of God, and welcome. Welcome into our presence, welcome into our day, welcome into our way. Have thine own way, Holy Spirit of God, all of you and none of us. Great is the faithfulness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is like unto our God, how great he is. How great is our God, how great is his name. He is the greatest one forever the same. He rolls back the waters from the mighty Red Sea, and he says, I will lead you if you will trust in me. Great is the faithfulness of Lord Jesus Christ. He is awesome in this place. He is worthy of all praise. To him our lives we raise. He is awesome in this place. He is the almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to our King. Lord, you are great and you are almighty. All honor, all grace, all goodness, all mercy is to you, O King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We come just now to say thank you, O King. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're not just a part of our lives, but you are our everything. Your love reaches way down deep within and passes all human understanding. So there, even now, will only be a song unto you, a praise unto you, we sing. Words alone just can't express our heart's desire, our gratitude for one more day, our needs you have supplied. Your warm embrace and your tenderness, your patience with us through all our mess. And we've come to one conclusion, Lord Jesus, you are truly the best. And so we say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to our King. You are great and you are almighty. All honor, all praise, all glory to you, our King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. Lord, you're worthy of all praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, Almighty God. You are awesome in this place, Mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. Lord, you're worthy of all praise. To you our hearts we raise. You are awesome in this place. Awesome in this place. Lord, you're awesome in this place. You're the Almighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, Holy Spirit, you are welcomed here. Come fill this place and charge this atmosphere. Your glory, Lord, is what our hearts long for. Holy Spirit, come fill this place. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We sing unto the Lord a new song, a song of praise, a song of worship, a song of honor, a song, hallelujah, that gets his attention, hallelujah. Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest. Hosanna to the Holy One of Israel. Great and faithful is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was and is and is to come. 
He is awesome. He is wonderful. He is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. How excellent is our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we ask that you will tabernacle with us today. With our time zone we are in, O oh God Almighty, whether it's morning, uh, mid-morning, afternoon or night, wherever your people are as they join in your presence, O oh Father, I pray that you will shift atmosphere and change circumstances for us, that we might receive from you, that we might walk in the fullness of your goodness, that we might be anointed sons that you can trust, that we might walk in the fullness of your goodness, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glorify yourself in every element and aspect of our lives, O oh God. May we want no good thing or lack no good thing because everything for life and godliness has been provided according to your word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless you, Lord. I praise you on behalf of these, your, your children, O God Almighty. I declare favor. I declare blessing, I declare peace, I declare joy, I declare love, I declare forgiveness, I declare deliverance, I declare that your awesome name brings awesome blessings and favor and transformation to each and every household, each and every life in every household, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ on this day, O oh God, that you have made for us to rejoice and be glad in. I speak the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord to each and every one of us and to our families, O oh God Almighty. May we walk in the fullness of your goodness as of today in an uncommon way in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, let the fruit of the Spirit, hallelujah, be manifested in us and through us and let the gifts of the Spirit be manifested from us for your glory and for your name's sake. The songwriter says, for your glory, I would do anything just to see you to behold you as my king hallelujah we want to behold you as our king lord the king of the fourth watch family the king of the fourth watch hour the king of the fourth watch family members in the name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth we cry out to you king jesus we call out your name they said if we call your name we shall be saved if we call your name we shall be safe if we call your name we shall experience you if we ask you shall come if we ask by your name if we knock you will open if we knock in your name and if we seek we will find you if we'll seek after your name and so lord your name has taken the shame your name has taken the blame and so we come in your name lord jesus christ of nazareth you are hallelujah holy you are awesome you are wonderful you are special you are true you are worthy oh god you are worthy and only you Great is the faithfulness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He who was and is and is to come. He is awesome in this place. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy of your praise. He is worthy of your acknowledgement. He is worthy, hallelujah, of your honor. Hallelujah. He is worthy of everything that we could ever give him and so much more. And as you call him by name, as you acknowledge him, as you call him by name, as you declare the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, even this morning, as you say the name Jesus, say the name Jesus, because there's something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name we know. Oh, how we love the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name we know. As we call out the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, things change, atmospheres shift, ah, situations change. Hallelujah. Blessings come for in his presence is fullness of joy and at his right hand pleasures forevermore and so we call out the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth for only he can bring transformation only he can bring manifestation only he can bring power love and a sound mind only he can bring hallelujah the strength that we need to do all things through him hallelujah only he can cause us to tread upon serpents and scorpions and have power over all the power of the enemy only our jesus as so as we call him by name this morning as we say jesus christ of nazareth as we say jesus our lord and savior as we say lord jesus 
the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, as we say, Lord Jesus, our healer, Lord Jesus, our deliverer, Lord Jesus, our present help in times of trouble, Lord Jesus, our Lord, our God, and our King. You are awesome, O Lord. You are worthy, O worthy, O worthy, Lord Jesus, you are worthy. Hallelujah, 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 as we acknowledge him like the 24 elders who took off their crowns and bowed down and worship him hallelujah bow down and worship him worship him oh worship him hallelujah bow down and worship him Worship Him, Jesus, oh, worship Him, consuming fire, sweet perfume, His awesome presence fills our rooms, this is Holy ground, this is holy ground, so come and bow, bow down. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bow down to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth for we desire to be authentic, genuine, hallelujah, specific and strategic. We desire to be in the presence of the living God. We don't desire fluff. We don't desire smoke and mirrors. We don't desire hallelujah to be at the ground level but we desire to come up higher to be set on fire that we might do and be for the good pleasure of the lord jesus christ so as lord as we bow down and worship you this morning as we come into your presence past the gates of praise into your sanctuary we come to meet you we come to say thank you we come oh god almighty because you're not just a part of our lives but you are truly our everything your love reaches way down deep within us uh, and passes all our understanding uh, we cannot understand why you love us so uh, one songwriter said to you in the midst of her passion jesus you love me too much oh too much oh too much oh excess love oh Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so we say, Lord God Almighty, we thank you that you love us too much. You love us beyond what we deserve. You love us beyond even what we can manage. You love us, O oh God Almighty, beyond what others could ever see or say or pass as our desire of our judgment hallelujah but father we thank you that you wonderfully love us that you carefully love us that you strategically love us that you specifically love us hallelujah you first love us therefore we must love you and so we come to say thank you thank you lord jesus for all that you do for us and for our nation for our families for our communities in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth we bless you this day we praise you this day we honor you this day father there's so much to place before you even this day so much to place before you O god and so we first must give you praise and honor and glory because before you set paul and silas free from the dungeon before you set peter free from being chained between the centurions and locked behind many gates in the prison god there had to be praise there had to be prayer there had to be worship there had to be so much O god almighty to get your attention to show sincerity to show faith to show confession hallelujah to show that we understood what was the situation and the circumstance so that you could act on this move daniel daniel had to had to fast until his change come shadrach meshach and abednego had to confess oh lord hallelujah we will not do anything other than honor you serve you and bow down to you and then 
came the answer this morning the fourth watch family is saying oh god we are willing to declare that you alone are our god we're willing to serve you in faithfulness we're willing to fear you and honor you and adore you and magnify you for you alone are worthy there is nothing in this world nothing in this world oh god almighty that can take your place hallelujah no foreign god can take your place no foreign god can take your place it's you that we need it's you that we love hallelujah hallelujah it's you that we love O oh lord jesus and so lord we cry out to you this morning on behalf of our nation our families i cry out to you on behalf of this fourth watch family i cry out to you god on behalf of their health on behalf of their finance on behalf of their mindset on behalf of their energy on behalf of their mind will and emotion on behalf of every body part of our body soul and spirit i cry out to you this morning O oh god and i say father be merciful to every member of this family be merciful in health and strength prosperity and good success be merciful in provision be merciful O god almighty hallelujah that when the enemy comes to retaliate he cannot hallelujah have any victory over us in the name of jesus christ lord grant us divine download of your word and the wisdom and understanding of your word in the name of the lord jesus christ father we desire to know you more to know you better to know you at a higher level we desire to increase to expand to enlarge according to your will for your glory in the name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth father god almighty we as your fourth watch family desire to walk in the fullness of wisdom and understanding of counsel and might of knowledge and of the fear of the lord we desire O oh god almighty to have healing in our hands and hinds feet O oh god that when we run we will never get weary when we walk we will never faint when they set up walls before us we will run through them when they set up troops we will leap over them in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth hallelujah we will leap over yes we will run through troops and leap over walls in the name of the lord jesus christ father we will fight the good fight of faith we will stand confident that no weapon formed against us can prosper and every tongue that rises against us in judgment is condemned we will stand confident and confess that we can do all things through you who gives us strength we will stand confident and know that we are blessed and highly favored we are the anointed of god the called of god the purpose filled of god in the name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth we will not be denied we confess that this is an awesome day for us come on people of god begin to confess hallelujah to confess and to prophesy is the same thing hallelujah just different words you can confess some things most persons would not prophesy uh, negativity over their lives but they confess negativity but i'm here to tell you this morning that the lord says what you confess or what you say you shall have just like what you prophesy you shall have we say that prophecy is that which comes directly from the lord as a rhema word but what you don't understand in a lot of instances that prophecy comes from the all well prophecy always comes from the spirit of god and where does the spirit of god lives inside of us and so we 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 we, we contextualize um uh, uh, confessions different from prophecy because we say prophecy comes from a rhema word which we indicate or think comes from heaven up above but heaven lives in us by the holy spirit and so every prophetic word that comes comes from the spirit of god that lives in us because the spirit of god is the spirit of prophecy come on can i talk to somebody this morning and so the spirit of confession can either, can either come like prophecy from our spirit or like a soul like 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 natural from our soul so when we confess from our soul we're confessing so that the atmosphere can be set to to come in agreement or in alignment with what is in our spirit so when we say i am wealthy i am wealthy even though we are not wealthy come on we're confessing something that we hope our spirit will come in agreement with hallelujah and prophesy concerning it amen because it is not yet so so we're confessing that which be not as though it was or is 
Amen. Hallelujah. So I want us to confess that today is a good day. We need to confess that today we are healthy and strong. Today, no weapon form against us prosper. Hallelujah. We want to confess that we are mighty through God to the pulling down of every stronghold. We must confess that our marriages are awesome and excellent. Or we must confess that we are getting married soon if we are single and that we will not get married for fleshly reasons or for mental reasons but for spirit reasons in the name of Jesus Christ. I confess that our children are blessed and highly favored. Our children are intellectuals. Our children are spirit filled. The Holy Ghost water baptized in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I confess that every fourth watch family member has children and children of power, children of value, children of virtue, children of valor in the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy that our children are strong and mighty through God. To, to, to stand against the wiles of the enemy, to stand against the influence and the bullying, the bullying at church, the bullying in their workplace, the bullying wherever they are, whatever age and stage our children are, we confess that they are leaders and not followers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We confess that our children stand for God, stand for righteousness, holiness and truth. Our children know the word of God and live by the word of God. Our children are obedient to the leading of the Holy spirit in the mighty name of jesus christ i prophesy that our children will not die before us they will not die young they will not die unfulfilling of purpose in the mighty name of jesus christ our children will live to raise the bar of our family name to grow to the higher heights and deeper depths in god and for god in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth as elisha had a double portion of what was upon his father elijah i prophesy i confess i prophesy Prophesy, I confess that our children shall have greater levels of anointing and power in the realm of the spirit than we ever we had in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, hallelujah. Your daughter shall preach the gospel at a great level. Your daughter shall be resolute and strong in righteousness, holiness, and truth. Your son shall be a mighty man of valor, an apostle, a prophet, hallelujah, a fivefold minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He shall bring people to repent. Repentance. Hallelujah. Your daughter shall draw men unto the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on. Your grandchildren shall be mighty uh, children of valor. Your grandchildren shall be like Gideon. They shall have an intimate relationship with the Lord God Almighty. Your grandchildren and your children shall be like Moses. They shall have burning bush encounters. Your children and your grandchildren shall be like Samuel. They shall hear clearly the voice of the living God who shall call them by name. Your children shall be like Jeremiah. Though they will go through some difficult times, they shall still come out as pure gold. They shall come out on top in the name of Jesus Christ. Your children, hallelujah, shall be like the apostles called and chosen of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare that no matter where your children are today, they shall still experience and encounter the Lord Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit with greater levels. Every desire that you have for yourself, I declare a double portion of that upon your children in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every negative thing that has happened to you and has happened already in your life, I declare that it shall not be the portion of your children in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I prophesy I declare I confess that going forward you shall walk in the fullness of your latter years your children's latter years shall come early in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth they shall live peaceably they shall live strong they shall live in peace they shall live in grace and mercy they shall live in plentiful in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth where we lived in a shock they shall live in a power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, uh, I declare that our children shall be blessed of the Lord, shall be a pleasant view in the eyes of the Lord, and a pleasant smell in the nostril of the Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. You can continue for a couple of seconds. If I missed anything concerning your children, speak it now. Speak it now. Come on, Ivan. Hey, come on. Carry on daily. Speak over your sons. Speak over them. Speak over them. Speak over them. Come on, Angela. Speak over your children, even your future children. If you don't have any children yet, come on. Put your hand on your womb by faith. Put your hand on your stomach down in the lower area of your stomach by faith and just command. Hallelujah. I declare that my 
my child shall come forth out of my womb. My womb shall be fruitful and it shall produce a mighty man of God, a mighty woman of God. Come on, those of you who have children already, just begin to speak. God wants to hear your voice. He's tired of hearing my voice on your behalf. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to know you. He wants to be able to say, ha, Paul, I know. Uh, Jesus I know and Nicole Samuels I know in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Michelle I know in the name of Jesus Christ and of Nazareth hallelujah come on God wants to declare that he knows us come on Jamel declare over your children declare that which you would love to see happen for your own self your own life declare it over your children declare it over them because if they prosper you prosper as well God has given us responsibility for our children and therefore we must do what is right in God's sight concerning them and that starts with speaking hallelujah by faith over them in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over Darian Benjamin Wade uncommon increase uncommon excellence uncommon good behavior uncommon love for Jesus Christ and for his word I speak over Athena Alicia Clark uncommon mental stability uncommon ability to seek after God uncommon ability to prophesy accurately uncommon ability to stand on the word of God and to live by the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over Athena and Darian prosperity and good success in the natural things and in the spiritual things I declare that they shall not fail but prevail in the mighty name of Jesus Christ they shall never spend a day in Satan's jail ah for Jesus Christ that Calvary has already given them bail in the mighty name of Jesus Christ my children are successful they are blessed and highly favored they are children of God and they walk in the fullness of the word of God, the power of God, the anointing of God, and the grace of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. God wants you to speak over your children, over your grandchildren, and over your even your future children in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so you have to declare it. Come on. We have to practice to prophesy, practice to confess. There's so many things that we, 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 we confess easily. That is not what God wants us to confess. God wants us to practice and be deliberate about confessing the right things. God wants us to speak in a way that reflects him. Come on. Hallelujah. Some of us have gotten into bad habits, myself included, of, 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 of practicing to speak um, from, a, from a satanic handbook where everything that we say, or not everything, pardon me, that's, that's erroneous, uh, too many things that we say leads with a negative leads with a negative we have to start the practice because what we put out in the air unless we cancel it it goes even if that's not what you meant remember God did not say God did not say you shall have what you think or what you mean in your heart you'll be judged ultimately by your heart position but the Bible also says we'll be judged for every idle word we speak so while we are in the natural functioning judgment will come via the words that we speak judgment of God will come via what is in our hearts hallelujah thank you Holy Spirit for that revelation so hear me in the natural as we live what we speak, what we say, will come to be our judge. But ultimately, when Jesus comes, we will be judged by what was in our hearts. Now, we have to practice that what is in our heart is what comes forth. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so sometimes I find it a little challenging when someone says, uh, when someone is doing something or saying something consistently and they say that's not what my what is in my heart I can understand once in a while a mistake um, you are thinking something um, and, and, and something else uh, was 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 expressed but when it becomes consistent when you consistently react in anger when you consistently react in frustration in anxiety in fear in in, in, um, in, in cursings uh, that is is beginning to be a reflection of a hard position because it comes too easily it comes too 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 comfortably amen 
But because we are saved and we are brothers and sisters in Christ, no one wants to really say, listen, you need to check your heart. Your heart is bitter. Your heart has iniquity in it. Because too consistently are bitterness, negativity, idleness coming from your heart. We have to get to that place of boldness where we can say in love, hey, come on now. There's too much consistency in this thing that is coming from your mouth. And it is, it, it, it's concerning. It's concerning. We need to do a check. Listen, a person's Christianity is not told, established, or accepted by how much scripture they read, how often they pray, how long they pray for, what they do at church, how well they preach. Come on. A person's Christianity is not judged by any of those things or any other thing that you can think of. It's not assessed and judged by how much um, schooling they had, how many seminars they went to, how many prophetic conferences, how many trainings, how many um, theological seminaries. It is not assessed by any of those things. Those things are not the foundation. Those things are the wall and the roof and the partitions and the fixtures in the house. The foundation of our Christianity is what our heart reflects. What our hearts reflect. Are you hearing me, people of God? And so it is out of the abundance of our heart that our Christianity is actually known. So if Jesus is not reflected in our hearts, not solidly rooted and grounded in our hearts, if he is not the one that is pouring out of our hearts, but our theological training, our anointing, our purpose drive, our church attendance and our church um, uh, 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 serving, if that's what's first and foremost, then we may just hear on that final day, God forbid, depart from me, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. Because works and service is not an indication that we know God, our heart and the consistency of how we think and what we say from our heart is the indication of our connection to the Lord. Anyone can do things in church. Anyone can be pastor, apostle, prophet. I mean, they're dime a dozen now. You don't have to pay good money now to get an apostle. $50 US is too much to get an apostle these days. They're everywhere. And I would want to say God is dropping them by the hundreds of thousands all over. Prophets, oh God, you just need to shake a mango tree and a prophet drop out. And I'm not saying that negatively or disparagingly. I'm just saying to you that there are there are more of the things that represents a ministering to the soul and to the flesh than the things that represent the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. You it is it is difficult. Hear me hear me carefully, and I will close on this part for, for this for this time. It is very difficult. In the context of what I see in scripture, very, very difficult, not impossible, but very difficult, according to what I see in scripture, for one who has been called of God, chosen of God, to the office of apostle or prophet, let me just use those two simply, to be immature, unschooled, untrained, huh? difficult. Can they be called of God and be unschooled and untrained and immature? Of course, 99% of the authentic people of God were called before they were formed in their mother's womb. But I'm here to tell you, people of God, without any malice, without any bad mind or grudgeful, without any um, uh, desire to, 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 to water down anybody's office, the office that God has called the fivefold ministers to operate in. 99% of the time, mm, back that up, Rowan, I repent. Too often, too often, 
people recognize their call people with prophetic giftings tell them that there's a call to the prophetic a call to the apostolic a call to the pastorship a call to the teacher office a call to the evangelist office a call to the elder or the deacon office or the bishop office and they jump from the word right into the office they jump from the word of confirmation because they saw it in a dream that God says, yes, you're going to be my bishop. You're going to be my apostle. You're going to be my, my prophet. And they jump from the word of confirmation right into the office. They have not even learned self-control. They have not learned the word. They have not learned how to, 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 to speak into the life of someone without destroying it. They have not learned the character and nature of Jesus Christ of Nazareth but they're in an office where that is required. The character and nature of Jesus Christ of Nazareth is required for you to be installed in the office of the fivefold minister. The fruit of the Spirit needs to be evident. The Bible tells you, though it is an Old Testament declaration, says if a prophet says something and it does not come to pass, do not fear him. I didn't send him. Jesus said, many have come, false prophets have come in my name, but I did not send them. How do you know a false prophet? How do you identify a false prophet when so many people are handing out business cards and saying that they are prophets and apostles? How do you know a false one? You look at how they, have, how they function, how they operate by their fruit, by their truth, by their giftings, by their anointing, come on, by how they deal with their family, if he's married or she's married, by the, how they deal with their spouse, how they, de how they walk in love or the lack thereof. These are things you look at. You don't just look at any one thing. If you look at just anointing or if you look at just the demonstration of power, you could get fooled. You could easily get fooled. My personal experience has been one of the persons that I saw that came into, into our church environment and he was so gifted. I was in awe. I was much younger. I was in awe of the giftings that, was, that, were, that were on his life. And guess what? I met a gentleman once who was assigned to arm a bear, this man, to take care of him, to go around with him. And the man says, listen to me. There is no doubt that this man is gifted. There is no doubt that like Jeremiah, God called him before he was formed in his mother's womb. But he ascended into the office before he was delivered, set free and made whole. He ascended into the office before time. He had not seemingly paid his dues and learned humility, learned honor, learned submission, learned how to walk in love. He had not. Listen, I would rather not. I would rather be around a man who has no giftings or a woman who has no giftings but knows the word and knows how to love than one who is marvelously gifted but has no love and no fruit. But in today's dispensation when everyone is looking for great for anointing and for, for, for persons for soothsayers to tell us what is it that's gonna happen tomorrow? Oh God says you're gonna get a big house on the hill. God says you're going to get a 5,000 square foot house with much, 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 many bathrooms and many bedrooms. We chase after those things so much that we miss the real important factors that are necessary for one to flourish and to prosper. And when, that, when, when, when it begins to bite us, when the consequence of one who is untrained in love and humility and honor and long suffering and temperance and peace and joy and celebration in every situation when those things are missing from that life because miracles are not going to happen every minute of every day every time you encounter them they're not always going to be um, prophesying to you and laying hands on you and, and, and you're getting healed because you can only get healed from so many things and no more Come on, once you have been completely healed, you don't need healing anymore. 
Now you need word. Now you need love. Now you need maturity. Now you need growth. If they don't have it, how can they give it to you? Because one can only give what they have. And so be careful, Fourth Watch family members, be careful, people of God, that you don't chase after giftings. And then there's a shifting. And then you complain to God about church hurt. You complain to God about church hurt. And God is saying, I didn't hurt you. You chase after that which I didn't tell you to chase after. You ran down into a rabbit's hole thinking that you would catch a rabbit. But there was a serpent waiting down there to get you. I didn't tell you to chase no rabbit. I told you I would bring a rabbit to you. God brings that which we must have to us. What we chase after is what hurts us. What we chase after is what hurts us. Amen. So I just want to just sow that seed into the lives of all of us, myself included, that we must be careful and mindful that we don't chase after the wrong thing. The wrong thing. <clears throat> Give things, sweet talk, nice dress, Dior clothes and, 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 and ballet shoes and Clark's shoes and all kinds of expensive designer shoes. All those things are nice for the person who wears them. When we are chasing after the person who wears them, what is that person? Who is that person? Who is that person? Is that person just one who has a gift but chase more after the, the outward appearance and hence has no substance to impart to us, has no love, has no grace, has no mercy, has no forgiveness, has no tact, no honor, no humility, no fear of God, because it is after you chase after that one and find them and start to spend time, intimate time in their presence that you're going to find out that they're like that. It's just like with a relationship. If a woman sees a handsome man, nicely groomed and manicured and nicely prepared and put together, smell good like woe, and she's attracted to that and she, she, she allows him to lure in on the basis of that, when she gets in and realizes that he's a, he's a, he's, I, I won't even use any description. And she begins to, then she begins to, 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 to regret. And she's saying, oh my goodness, how could I have gotten fooled? Because you chase after the outer instead of allow God to present. Amen. The man is supposed to be the one chasing after, seeking to find not the woman don't be attracted to good looks though good looks are nice good looks are important that's fine i don't want you to wake up in the morning beside a husband that every time you open your eyes if you're not turned the opposite direction from him you're scared out of your sleep no we we we, we don't want that either we don't want you to say boy i i the, the, what i love about my husband is 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 his heart my husband's heart is so amazing. I love my husband's heart. Oh, praise God. Praise God. A good-looking man can have a good heart too. Amen? So pray God, give me a good-looking man, but give me a good-looking man with an amazing heart. That's okay. Nothing is wrong with that. Nothing is wrong with that. But understand that whatever it is that God gives you, he may not give you, he might give you a good-looking man, but he's not frightfully handsome. Amen? Pastor Marsha would say, yeah, that's my baby. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Pastor Marsha says I'm good looking. She's having to try to convince me of that for, the, for, for a few years now. But she says I'm good looking. You're frightfully handsome. Oh, Jesus. Here you know, she upgraded. <laughs> she has upgraded the thing. Sister Denise, cover her eyes. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. But seriously, guys, um, there is there's there's something that we need to value that is more than what we see on the outside because what we see on the outside will often get stale especially if the character and nature of the person begins to show as ugly if ugliness starts to come from the inside no matter how beautiful they are on the outside the outside will look ugly as well a friend of mine says 
to said to me just recently he says for every amazingly beautiful woman you see or every awesomely handsome man you see there is somebody running trying to jump into the sea to get away from them trying to get away from them no matter how gorgeous no matter how well dressed and how well smelling come on some of you have had those experiences experiences no matter how eye-catching, how everybody else is saying, my God, what a cute girl. Mm -mm. What a handsome man. Wow, six foot one, washboard abs, brilliant. All these things. Yes, somebody is chasing away, running, hoping that he never finds them. Unless Jesus has transformed them completely. Amen. And so be careful what we chase after. Be careful which rabbit hole we run down trying to find meal for the day. Jesus is our provider. Jesus is our provider. Let him provide. Ask and it shall be given unto us. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wanted to get into to the word a little quicker today, but we cannot. It would be remiss of me if we didn't at least say a little prayer for the nations of the world that are at war, that are at loggerheads with each other, and even those who are posturing um, like they're about to fight. Hallelujah. Things are looking a particular way. And I understand um, some persons would say, Pastor, why bother to pray about those things? Because the Bible tells you that in the end times, there'll be wars and rumors of wars. As I said yesterday, for those who were listening intently, understand that regardless of what will come to pass in our lifetime, God still has given us a responsibility that we should not shirk, we should not walk away from, we should not neglect. Regardless of what is produced by what we do, our responsibility is what God will assess us on, not the outcomes. We plant, someone else water, but God gives the increase and God decides when and how he gives that increase. And so as I explained yesterday, God says we must pray for Israel. It matters not what Israel does or doesn't do. It matters not what is how, how um, we disagree with what is happening in or out of Israel. God himself who we submit to and bow to and fear and serve faithfully has given us a command and that's the only thing he's going to assess us on so like your job you have a job your boss has given you a job description and you 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 don't do what is on the job description but you impact every department in the company the company has grown significantly as a result of your your other jobs that you have done the other departments that you have impacted, the other places that you have gone, the other people that you have raised up and helped to mature. And when your personal assessment comes, your boss says, you didn't do this, you didn't do this, you didn't do this well, you barely did this, and you're about to lose your job or lose your, your, your pay increase or your promotion. And you're saying, but this company wouldn't be at the best, at the place that it is had it not been for me. Yes, I agree, and we thank you very much. But you're rebellious and disobedient. Because if you are going to do that, and we are grateful that you have done it, but you should have done it on your time. You should have done what you were assigned to do, and then when your time, when you have time, you do the other things that you did. I can't give you kudos for those things. I'll say thank you. But I can't put those on your job description or on your assessment because they were not on your assessment form in the first place. So we must be careful that we don't go into other areas and seek to do other things that are not on our job description. Our job description said pray for our leaders, pray for, the, for, for Israel, pray for, for, for the less fortunate, serve and be a blessing and pray for... Pray for your enemies. That's it. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God has given us specific things that we need to do, guys. And that's what he's going to do our assessment on. Amen. 
So let's pray for for, 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 for for the people now and then we go into some word quickly as, as we can. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that your hand is upon this world. Nothing happens at the behest or at the will of Satan except what you allow. He is not in control, though he is the prince of the power of the air. You are still God all by yourself. And through your saints, through your sons and daughters that are strategically based in the seven continents of the world, God, as we intercede, you send power, you send angels, you send the Holy Spirit to do and to be for your good pleasure. And so we thank you today, O gracious, wonderful God, that we do not have to be nervous or fearful or trembling or wondering if this is the end. For you said there will be wars and rumors of wars. You'll be, you said, O God, that there will be wickedness. Men's hearts will wax cold. All kinds of evil will take place. Ah, but do not fear, for that's just the beginning. Of our sorrow so what we're seeing now while it is an indication of the end times being ushered in it is not the end it is the beginning of the end and so father we pray for the peace of Jerusalem we pray God Almighty that there will be peace in Palestine we pray for the children and the and the and the children's children that are in these nations that are in conflict right now, not just Israel and, 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 and Palestinians, but God Almighty, those in Africa that are warring, those in Ukraine and Russia that are warring, oh God Almighty, we pray for all the places where wars are taking place and rumors of wars like with China and Taiwan. Oh God Almighty, we pray, Father, that you will touch the hearts of these people. God, where did their hearts, where did human hearts become so callous? How how did human hearts become so hard, so rock hard, that they are willing to kill other people who have kidneys and liver and spleen and heart and lungs and brain just like them? They are willing to destroy them, squash them like roaches. Ah, God Almighty, with, with impunity, with, with this disdain, where, where did men's hearts become like that, oh God Almighty, that we would want to just destroy others? who seem like us, look like us, walk and talk like us, who are created beings like us. Where did that come from, God? Father, we pray that the hearts of the kings will be turned in a way that will cause them, O oh God Almighty, to recognize the value of each other, the value of forgiveness, the value of love, the value of sacrifice, the value of being and doing for others. Oh, Father God Almighty, we ask that you will visit the leaders of the various nations. Visit them, oh God, like you visited Abimelech. Visit them, visit them like you visited Xerxes. Visit them, oh God, like you visited Nebuchadnezzar. Visit them in this time like you visited Pharaoh, oh God. Whatever is necessary, whoever you have to visit, oh God Almighty, that are in positions of control, positions of authority, positions of power, great power. We ask that you will visit them, O Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and cause a shift in their mindset, a shift in their hearts, a shift in their positions, that they will stop treating other people's lives as if it has no value. I pray, God, minister, minister to the lives of our leaders, minister to the lives of our leaders, underground hit squads going against their enemies their competitors their rivals issuing death warrants i pray god that you will touch the hearts of their people of your people so that they might truly be a reflection of you and not a reflection of lucifer in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray god that you will grant peace peace that passes all understanding to the women and children that are being displaced as we speak. Nations that are in turmoil, not just of war, but of civil war as well, like Haiti and other nations, oh God, where it is internal, not an external source or force that has in invaded, but they are destroying their own people. Father, I pray that you will touch in a special way and bring restoration bring peace bring a family bring back the family bonding in the name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth 
I pray, oh God, that the, 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 the conflict in the Middle East now will de-escalate and come back to norm. But Lord, I pray that normal will not be this constant celebration of evil, this always and only desire to satisfy flesh, but that even in this particular thing that has happened, that both sides will come to realize that if they trust in man, if they trust in man to be to, 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 to be honest and of good report and of integrity, that they will fail. If they trust man to watch over their lives, it will be dangerous and they will fail. And so, Lord, may the nation of Israel, may the nation of Palestine, may the nation of Haiti, may the nation of Jamaica, May the nation of the United States, China, Russia, Ukraine, and all the other nations that are in conflict, either externally, by external forces or internal forces, may all of these nations and much more come to realize that only through you, Christ Jesus, only by you, Christ Jesus, can there truly be peace, can there truly be love, can there truly be purpose fulfillment. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So have your way, Father, in these nations. Have your way in these governmental leaders' hearts. Have your way, O oh God, in their system of governance. Have your way, O oh Father, that the process will not be contaminated either by sexual immorality or by strength and muscle through guns and bombs and planes and ships. But may it be by your word for your will and for your purpose sake in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth Amen and Amen Hallelujah, Hallelujah Thank you Jesus Thank you Lord, Hallelujah Thank you Jesus Grace and peace to each and every one we declare, Hallelujah Peace to Jerusalem Favor to Jerusalem Grace and mercy to Jerusalem and the pressure that they are under right now we declare that it is so, but we declare grace and peace to all the nations that are embattled at the moment as well. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God most high. Uh, I didn't say good morning especially. Good morning to each and every one of you on Instagram, Facebook, on TikTok, on Arrows Internet Radio. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for waking up and being a part of what God is doing. If you missed the first part of the prayer and encouragement, please remember to go back onto YouTube. Hallelujah. Liberty for Living Ministries, RMW. And like and subscribe and watch the first part and just um, listen to the confessions over your life and over your family and just be a part of it and enjoy what God is doing for us in this season amen so if you woke up late you can go back and just watch the first half an hour of the devotion so that you can get that that impartation of declaration over your life amen praise god so we're we're, we're gonna go into the scriptures now uh first timothy chapter six we're still in first timothy chapter six hallelujah first timothy chapter six please turn with me in your bibles to that first timothy chapter 6 and we had gotten to verse 13 we had gotten to verse 13 i think i believe uh, the last time we were there i have a little mark there which indicates and i don't see any mark further down so that tells me that verse 13 is where we were at hallelujah so verse 13 of first timothy chapter 6 in my niv version of the bible says in the sight of god okay let me um let me read verse 12 first it says fight the good fight of faith that's why we were saved we were saved to fight the good fight of faith amen we were saved children of god people of god we were saved to fight the good fight of, fight of faith now it is not a fight where we're trying to ensure that we preserve it it is not a fight that we are fighting to ensure that we preserve it it's already preserved 
we cannot lose it. We can give it away, but we cannot lose it. Are you hearing me? Satan cannot take our faith. He cannot take our salvation. He cannot take the Holy Spirit from us. He cannot take nothing that God has given to us. But we, of our free will, can give it up. And so when, when, when the Bible says that we must fight the good fight of faith, we must fight to keep what is rightfully ours. Not from one who will take it away, but to make sure we don't give it away. Okay? So when, when Satan is coming after us, he doesn't come to say, why don't you... Um, he doesn't come to say, I'm coming to take your salvation. I'm coming to take your peace. I'm coming to take your joy. I'm coming to take your blessings. He comes and he encourages us to give it to him. So when Satan comes, he's not coming and bringing a man or a woman and say, go um, give up your, your, your salvation. He brings them and he says, this is a gift to you. Engage with this gift. Fighting the good fight of, of faith says, I will not do this thing and sin against my God. That's the fight of faith. Because if you obey Satan and get with someone who you're not supposed to get with, your salvation becomes challenged. The more often you do it, is the more the joy of God's salvation become less and less manifested in our lives. Come on. If we begin to chase after money, and come less and less to church. If we begin to demonstrate certain things, like for example, there's this person that um, that we know um, uh, that 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 just used to be so deep in God, so all about God. So I mean, gee whiz, you 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 would be jealous sometimes when you see how this person is just so solidly in God. And then the person got. Um, a, a, a promotion a person the person got a promotion and they became swamped by this promotion with work and that fight of faith to maintain connection to God connection to the gathering of the saints that person lost and now when you see the person, because the person stopped coming to church, because they, 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 they were deeply embedded in um, the things that Satan put before them, they are, when you see them now, they don't look anything like how they used to look. They don't sound anything like how they used to sound. They are not only seemingly, seemingly back in the world, have gone back to the vomit, but seemingly, seemingly is worse than before. So I use that example to say that sometimes because we don't fight the good fight of faith, we don't fight to preserve righteousness, fight to preserve holiness, fight to preserve truth, not from Satan. Hear me carefully. Satan cannot, cannot take our righteousness. He cannot take our holiness. He cannot take our truth. But Satan can put on the screen pornography. Satan can put before us a handsome man or a nice looking girl. Satan can put before us money in a drawer with no one else around with the temptation based on what we are going through at home to take it and no one will know. Those are the things that Satan can do and many more. But we can always turn and walk away. We can always say, yeah, you look good guy, but mm, how can I do this thing and sin against my God? I got to fight for my salvation. I got to fight to preserve what God has given me. I got to fight to make sure that though you can't take it, I don't give it to you. I got to, hey, how could I do this thing? I got to take my hand in my foot, as we say in the country, in Jamaica and run. That's fighting the good fight, people of God. 
so you're not fighting off satan because he wants to come and control your your your, your place like in the old testament when the philistines came they wanted to not only kill but they wanted to enslave and take over when the romans came they killed and enslaved and took over the territories that god gave to the children of israel but but but, but that's not what we're fighting about now because there is no roman soldier there is no philistine there is no amalekite no hittite no jebusite no parasite no any kind of height that has the right to come take what is ours they can't take what is ours in this season for jesus has already given us everything that we need for life and godliness vineyards we didn't plant and houses we didn't build jesus has already given us a rock that is higher than i Jesus has already given us uh, that which is rooted and grounded in us, uh, that which cannot be plucked up, uh, cannot be de defeated, uh, cannot be dynamited out. Uh, it is solidly in us, uh, but the same way Satan would have a hard time uh, digging it out of us, uh, we can without a thought uh, give it up. Uh, and so when a woman uh, gets the sweet talk from the man in church that is not her husband, uh, and she go home with him uh, and give up herself, uh, what she has done is that which he couldn't take under no circumstance she gave it away without effort because she didn't fight the good fight that man who saw that miniskirt and couldn't resist though he knows he's a man of god though he knows he's supposed to be a joseph he chased after the miniskirt and found that it was a very little word but that's after he has wallowed in dirt ah god almighty hallelujah and so we must be careful to fight the good fight to preserve what we have not from the enemy trying to take it but from our own soul trying to forsake it amen praise god i hope you understand that hallelujah i wasn't supposed to be exegesing or even expanding on this particular verse so much it was just supposed to be leading to 13 but y'all just chum on cho cho <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Hallelujah. So we must fight, guys. Fight, fight, fight to preserve it. Fight the good fight of, fight of faith. He said, take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. And so we have to take hold. We have to grab onto it and we have to hold it. Don't let it go. Don't let it go with anxiety. Don't let it go because of fear. Don't let it go because of the winds and the waves. Don't let it go because water is coming in the boat. Don't let it go because we don't have any gas to, 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 to drive to work today. Don't let it go because we had a tormenting night last night. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. As you talk about that last night, I dreamt, hallelujah, that Satan was coming after me with his biggest weapon. He was coming after me with an alligator. Hallelujah. I dreamt that I was somewhere and I had this piece of cardboard like a box in my hand and an alligator or a crocodile. I don't even care which one because they both almost look the same and carry out the same work for Satan. For us in the natural, we may need to identify which one, but that is, is, is neither here nor there because they both look alike and they carry out the same kind of assignment. And this alligator or crocodile was coming after me and I held up the box and he bit it and it was in his mouth and he was still pushing after me and I was pushing him back and pushing him back and he came close and was opened his big mouth and, was, and his teeth and his jaws were I could literally feel like the brushing against my stomach that means God is saying to me son be careful in prayer son get your people your family members your fourth watch family and your family to pray for you because Satan is upset about what you are revealing to my people Satan is upset how you're calling my people to book Satan is upset how you're trying to get my people to understand what I want them to understand that they might walk in holiness and uprightness before me satan is upset that you are bringing forth a new revelation from me that will cause them to run and not be weary and walk and not faint so he's coming after you he wants to eat you up he wants to tear out what is in your belly because you know that the holy ghost is in this midsection of you he the holy spirit uh, is where the belt of truth is the belt of truth is the representation of the holy spirit and that's where he was going after he wasn't going after my 
legs. He wasn't going after my head. He wasn't going after my hands. He was going after my midsection, where the belt of truth is, where the righteousness of God is. But I'm here to tell you this morning that no matter how close the alligator jaws came, he still missed. No matter what he was trying to do, he still missed. Uh, somebody got to hear me this morning. We got to fight the good fight of faith and hold on to the eternal life that God has given unto us. We got to hold on to righteousness, holiness, and truth. Because if we compromise, if we compromise, hear what happens. Listen, this is what most of us as Christians are afraid of. We're afraid to see the literal alligator or crocodile coming to take us, coming after us. And so we compromise. We become lukewarm. We water down. But we don't understand that though we don't see the crocodile, he's always around. It is better to see him because then you can fight the good fight against him when you see him. When you don't see him, maybe it means that you're in his belly. Maybe when you don't see the crocodile, it means you're in his belly. So there are those who will have to fight the good fight, resist the devil that he will flee from them, and those who will not have to fight because they're already in the, bellies, the, the belly of the whale like Jonah. Once you're a Christian, you have to fight the good fight of faith. Once you're a believer, you're always going to have to fight the good fight of faith. It's just that you're fighting from a position of win. If you're not fighting, maybe you are consumed by sin. Maybe you're already within. He who is wanting to steal, to kill, and to destroy, to devour us. Amen? And so, it's important, guys. Come on, please remember. Pray for your leaders. Pray for people like me and Pastor Marsha who have to truly seek God and put ourselves in the firing line to try and get downloads to come and upload to you. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. And so he says, take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession. So when we made our good confession, we were called to, we were called to an eternal life and we made a good confession that this is what we want and this is what we were going to be. Hallelujah. Um, Sister Denise says the devil, the devil is really going after the men of God and God's truth in their inward parts. So he attacked the belly and loins. But in the name of Jesus, we come against those attacks right now. We say, demons, hallelujah, you have failed and you will continue to fail. You went after Joseph, but he still made the palace. You went after Samuel, but he still became a mighty prophet. You went after Saul and he became Paul. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. You went after Jesus and he ascended into heaven and was given a name that is above every name. He, that, 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 that resume continues. You went after Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You went after David, but you failed. You went after Solomon, but you failed. You went after the disciples, but you failed. You went after, after the Christians, after Pentecost, but you failed. And you will continue to fail because only we can give you victory. You cannot earn victory over us. We have to give you victory. And so we have the victory. Hallelujah. We have the victory. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know Pastor Marsha in our head is saying, the next part is the best part. Satan defeated. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's Pastor Marsha's dance when that song starts to play. She did it. Head bop to the side and head bop to the side. <laughs> With a step out front. Hey, I can see her in the spirit now. Satan's defeated. Hallelujah. Come on. Glory to God. It's a good day. Satan's already defeated, guys. We're not fighting to beat Satan. When we're fighting the good fight of faith, we're not fighting to beat Satan. Satan, we can't beat him. Jesus has already defeated him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus has already defeated him. 
but from the place of his defeat from the place of his prison from the place of his no victory he is still shouting a word saying can you come be drawn as he spoke into eve's ear he's still trying to speak into our ears can you enjoy a little pornography can you enjoy a little connection with your ex can you enjoy a little anger a little frustration a little unforgiveness a little resentment a little bitterness come on it, it, it's okay you can always say god forgive me you can always say god forgive me man it's okay it's not an issue that's how you were brought up don't you know that you were born in sin and shaped in iniquity satan have lyrics like better than any sweet man he has lyrics he knows exactly what to tell us to cause us not to fight the good fight but i say to you you have to acquiesce you have to give up of yourself to him you have to get intimate with him you have to agree because he cannot rape you oh jesus come on somebody he cannot rape you he cannot take it i'm guaranteeing you that on my life he can take nothing from you but he can influence you he can hypnotize you he can try to tell you that's why the bible says for lack of knowledge we perish for lack of knowledge of what satan is able to do and cannot do we fall victim to him and we give up what is rightfully ours hallelujah and so our job is not to agree with him he can talk until his jaws hurt just ignore him when sister raquel is walking down the street or driving down the street and a man that doesn't meet her requirements come up and starts to sing sweet words in her ears starts to tell her all kind of things guess what she does because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. his jaws must get tired he must stop and when he stops and goes she goes on about her business we don't have to respond to what satan is saying or doing guys we just have to hold on to eternal life to which we have confessed and fight the good fight to preserve <laughs> i'm not even gonna tell you what sister raquel is saying here now <laughs> praise god hallelujah but we have to to to, to um to, to, to take hold we have to take responsibility for what it is that we have satan cannot steal from us like he did from david he cannot force intimacy on us he cannot do anything to us but we can come in agreement and do with him so it says the confession in the presence of many witnesses 13 in the sight of god who gives life to everything and of christ jesus who while testifying before pontius pilate made the good confession and so we're, all we're doing is walking in the same way that jesus walked in the in front of he who was tempted jesus um, Pilate said don't you know that I have the power to release you or to crucify you and he was trying to tempt Jesus to give up that which was rightfully his but Jesus made a good confession Jesus says you could not have this power unless my father give it to you Jesus said don't you know that I have power to call 12 legions of angels to come defend me but I choose not to people of God we will stand before situations that represents Pontius Pilate or even Herod we will stand before situations before Jesus comes maybe too many many situations at work in our in our in our um, relational life ladies when you're standing before a man who says I love you and I want to marry you I am gonna make you my wife you've been praying for a husband for the past four years five years six years and you've been saying yes and this one now come he's in church and play the drums or the guitar once in a while him preach him is youth pastor or him is um associate pastor him, him, him look good on the outside but when you're on date and you're 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 in that private place him saying like home i promise you that you're gonna be my wife can you give me some from now can i get some from now you're already confirmed as my wife that is the satanic moment when you know that all that you saw <laughs> somebody said 25 years oh, praise god that is that's a life sentence it's time for you to come out of jail now in the name of jesus christ 
Hallelujah. I release that Boaz, that Boaz from God, that Boaz from God, that Boaz that will not seek to contaminate you or cause you to let go of the fight that you are fighting for your faith, that fight for righteousness, holiness, and truth, that fight for obedience to God's word to be holy as he is holy. I declare the favor of God upon you, single women and single men, that desires to stop burning and start earning what for what you were yearning. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I cut you loose from every satanic assignment to block you from fulfilling the purposes of God in, in holy matrimony. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. And so God is saying, as the, as the enemy puts things before you, people of God, as he seeks to put obstacles and temptations before you, you have to know that God has said, come on, V. Scott, fight the good fight. Come on, Joan Jones, Jamel, fight the good fight. Denise, come on, Ruth, hallelujah, Hilton, fight the good fight and resist the devil that he will flee from you. Fight the good fight that he will flee from you guys. Because like Joseph, <clears throat> when Joseph ran from Potiphar's wife, yes, he was running towards the prison, but he was also running towards the palace. The prison came between the palace and Potiphar's house. And so as he ran from Potiphar's wife, he was running away from her and he was running to the prison. But he also was running to the palace because the prison is closer to the palace than Potiphar's house. Somebody should get that. I hope somebody received that in them spirit. We will run from that which the enemy has placed before us as a temptation. But understand that as you run from it, you may run into more trouble. But the more trouble you run into is closer to your victory than what you're running from. Amen. What you have run into is closer to your victory than what you have run away from. So run towards your destiny. Amen. Hallelujah. So in 13, it says in the sight of God who gives life to everything and of, of Christ Jesus, who while testifying before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. I charge you, hallelujah, to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of the Lord Jesus. So here it is. Come on. Somebody should mark that in their Bible. I charge you to keep this command, the command, hallelujah, the command to stay faithful, the command to honor your commitment or your confession. Come on. In the presence of the witnesses, your command to resist the devil, your command to fight the good fight of faith. He says, I charge you to keep this command spot without spot or blemish. Preserve this command like Joseph preserved his command. Amen. So we can choose, <laughs> Brother Marlon said, which P will you choose? Potiphar's wife or prison? Potiphar's wife or prison. Well, we have now learned that Potiphar's wife or Potiphar's house is further away from the palace than the prison. So it's better to choose the prison than Potiphar's wife. Because as you choose, yes, man, I know that that's what you were saying, my brother, trust me. But the truth is, you cannot get to the palace before the prison. And if your eyes are so focused on the palace, man of God, you will be it will be difficult for you to endure the prison. The prison must come before the palace. And so we don't look to heaven before we have conquered earth. So many people are so heavenly minded that they are no earthly good. So it's from that perspective. I hear you and I know what you are saying. But I want these people that God has given me to sow into to not be like their parents or their grandparents or their great grandparents who were so heavenly minded that them said, Goodbye world, I stay no longer with you when they have 40 more years to live in the world. The devil is a liar. So we don't set up anything for our family. We don't work and build no, no retirement fund. We don't, put, we don't buy no house 
so that our children and our grandchildren can have generational wealth. We do nothing because we are so heavenly minded, we're no earthly good. And so we end up being a burden on other people because we're always begging. We, we, we're not attractive to other people who wants to come into the kingdom because they say all kingdom people are poor, poverty stricken and beggy beggy. That's only because we're so focused on heaven that we refuse to live in the earth. But God needs for us to be prosperous and successful in the earth so that we can by our life, by our words, by our righteousness, holiness and truth, impress and draw men unto God. Are you hearing me? So I got to teach different. I understand, but what I have to tell you is that, listen, this is more important. This is where the, 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 the pit is. And, Potiphar, and Potiphar's house is closer to the palace than the pit. The prison is closer to the palace than Potiphar's house. Why is that important, people of God? Because in every situation and circumstance that you are in, if you understand it and live it out, then you'll give thanks in it, knowing fully well that I'm one step closer to my goal of the palace. But if you're so focused on the palace, you begin to murmur and complain. God, why am I in this prison? 14 years it is said that Joseph spent in the prison. Why am I in the prison? I should have been gone already. When I reach the seven years, seven is completion, God. I have completed my term. I have completed my assignment. I have completed my time. Next year is eight, new beginning. God, I need to get a new beginning somewhere else. I need to be out of here. But God didn't show him that he was going to be in the palace. God was just showing him that he needs to persevere in every circumstance and situation that he was in so that he could get to the palace as a surprise so I hear you man of God and, and, and in some respects I, I understand and respect that but we're looking at it from the from 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 the the armchair quarterback stage we already know what Joseph was going towards we don't know what we're going towards they were a, a Set eight, 10 years ago, I didn't know I would be in this position. I didn't know I would be a pastor. I didn't know God would use me to impact his people in the way that he's doing now. I didn't know that. But I had to press in. I had to fight the good fight. I had to persevere. I had to repent consistently. I had to seek after God. I had to seek first his kingdom. I had to do all those things and then bam, voila, this is the reward. This is what, what where, where he has me. And I don't know what tomorrow will bring. I don't know what level God is going to take me to. But I know that no matter what level God has in store for me, there is a devil waiting to tempt me like Potiphar's wife. And so we all must believe. Do the best you can in the circumstance that you are in at the moment. Resist Potiphar's wife and let God determine the rest of your life. Amen? All our job is to resist Potiphar's wife. To stick to the confession that we have made to fight the good fight of faith. And when we do that, God will take care to add unto us all the other things that we need and that we don't even know. Amen? Hallelujah. That's 14. So we're at 14 now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We just finished 14, so we're gonna I'm gonna mark it so that we're at 15 come the next time. Amen. Praise God. We're moving slowly but surely into the land of the palace. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I hope that you are blessed and encouraged. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Let us pray. Father in heaven, come on, get you get your communion. Father in heaven, we give you praise and honor and glory. We thank you for your goodness and mercy towards us. We thank you for your blessings and peace. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that as we confess who we are, hallelujah, that we manifest who you desire for us to be. As we confess who we are in you, we manifest who we are through you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Father, may we be sons of thunder, sons of of righteousness, sons of holiness, sons of truth, sons that fight the good fight of faith, sons that hold on to our eternal life. Hallelujah. 
through our confessions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May we continue to walk by faith and to confess our faith in you, by you, and for you. We ask that you will sanctify and consecrate these emblems even now. May they be to our bodies health and strength, prosperity and good success, according to your will and for your purpose. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth's mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. And so as the Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples and he said, Eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Mm. Hallelujah. And likewise, he took the cup. He blessed it and took a sup and he said, Drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you again for making the sacrifice to be with us in this devotional time. Thank you so much, Nakia. Hallelujah, bless you. I speak God's favor, God's peace over you, woman of God. I bless you to flourish, to prosper, to increase, to expand and to enlarge. May the Lord be rooted and grounded in you and may the mind of Christ be your portion and the portion of your children. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may this year be the year of favor upon you and upon everything that concerns you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Girl, girl, when you come back home, I'm telling you now, I'm not asking you. I'm not engaging your free will. When you come back home, I am putting you under the water. And I know you agree. So type yes, pastor. Hallelujah. You are going under the water and you're coming up because you're a mighty woman of God. And you need to be walking in the fullness of your anointing. So I'm not, I'm not asking your permission. I'm dictating this one to you. And I hardly ever do that. <laughs> but you... Nakia Williams, when you come home, as soon as your foot touch the soil of this nation, if you're even the only person to be baptized, I am baptizing you. So you better respond and say yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So that's it for this morning. Please raise your hands for the blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Go forth, family, and have an amazing day God's way. For our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day his way. In Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus loves you and we love the whole owner too. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I see Sister, Sister Lorraine, Lorraine Mitchell holding up a hand. Does that mean you want to be baptized too? Hallelujah. If that's what it means, please send us a, a, a message, a message. We will arrange for you to be baptized into the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, glory to God. Anyone else who is here who has not yet been baptized either in water or in the Holy Spirit, <laughs> Patricia, Patricia McDonald, Hallelujah. I see a hand as well. Guys, if this hand means that you would like to be baptized, please reach out to us. This is urgent and valuable. We meet, we, we're serious about baptism. Hallelujah. And so, if you want to be baptized, if you want to start serving God in an awesome way, especially like how signs of the times are so dangerous, I want to be um, make myself available on behalf of Liberty for Living Ministries, uh, Pastor Marshall, myself, and the leadership team, and we will get you baptized and settled in to a, a Bible training um, opportunity, and so that you can grow in a family that will love you and nurture you unto maturity amen so if you want please reach out to us on messenger uh, whatsapp any which way you can any connection that you can just reach out to us and once we are connected we will take it from there and do the other things that needs to be done amen praise god hallelujah hallelujah so i said that already so on behalf of pastor marsha wade i'm rowan wade saying have a fantastic day and go and do some stuff for some people. Amen.
Make sure you do something good for someone today. Call someone, encourage someone, pray for someone, whatever it is. Help someone with a meal or just help someone at work to do something. Hallelujah. Oh, already baptized. All right, Patricia. Praise God. We bless God for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Continue to grow in God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you and bless your household in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, guys, have a great, great day. It is well. God is with you and it is well because he is with you. Be blessed. You are.